think that's going. Amen. It is a good morning this morning. Uh, good, good, morning good day. Amen. Yeah. Good morning. We should get Carol up here to preach. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us, Lord. It's just so good. And pray, Father, this morning that your Holy Spirit be here amongst us, Father, and fill us. Uh, fill me, Lord, this morning. Help me, Lord, to uh, bring out from your word the subject this morning. And I pray, Father, be a blessing to your people as we thank you for this time together now. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I think somebody done something in this very recently, but um, so I hope I haven't got the same sort of message, but if you have, you have. Sometimes we get double, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Yeah, it is good to be in the house of God on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. It's so good. And uh, all the stuff that goes on around us, you know, it, it's crazy. It's And it, the way it tries to link, you know, Easter has nothing to do really with the Passover. They're two separate things completely, uh, Easter and the Passover. But um, the good thing is Jesus Christ did come. We're going to read a little bit of this, that, in, in uh, chapter 15 here. I'm going to read the whole chapter. I timed it out. It takes about five minutes to read out. But we need to, uh, we just need to read it anyway. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain under this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of also, me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and this grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I laboured more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were, it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection? Must have been a few unbelievers around then. They had a group called the Sadducees, and they were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection. Oh, you go. And you know, they didn't hang around for long after Jesus Christ rose from the dead. They died out in about uh, AD 70, I think it was. The Sadducees' sect was gone. But there's a lot around today that are still sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection, amen. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, yea, yet in your sins. Then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and become the firstfruits of them that slept. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Yes. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as that... As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, after, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. 
for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did not which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptised for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptised for the dead? I do not understand that scripture, <laughs> and I haven't had anyone explain it to me as yet. All I can understand is they were, they were baptising for the dead. Maybe it was saved people that didn't get a chance to get baptised. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure. Maybe they can fill me in on that later. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage did me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. You might as well just... Enjoy life, amen. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Doesn't that strike your heart, amen? But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come, thou fool? That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory, glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonour, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spirit, spiritual. I just heard a, a guy recently preach on that, and he was talking about um, our, our faith. And at first comes the natural man, and sometimes we... We have to rely on our faith in the natural man to open our mouth in prayer. But as soon as we do that, the spirit takes over and we pray in the spirit. I thought that's a, a good way to think of that. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In, the, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That, hey, I think uh, Israel's going to wake up when that trumpet sounds. Amen. They listen to them trumpets in Israel all the time, the beginning of feasts and everything else. When that trumpet sounds, there's going to be some big happening. Amen. Oh, praise God. I can't wait. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's, I'm glad Paul penned down this. 
and it's probably because of a lot of unbelievers around the time of the re you know the, the time of um, of Christ's resurrection. You know, it's because of His resurrection that we're going to have a resurrection. Amen. Amen. And that's what I want to look at today. Just look at this subject today and look at a few verses here because it says. Um, got to find it and in verse 35 but some man will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come I want to look at the resurrection of the body today the resurrection of the body is resurrection Sunday so and because of Christ's resurrection we read the gospel there at the start and because of all that's happened then we are going to have a resurrected body we're going to have a look at that you know, the indwelling Holy Spirit is God's guarantee that our bodies will be raised again. Yes, sir. Because you have Christ in you, if you're saved here today, Jesus Christ is living within you and it bears witness to you that one day you're going to get a new body and you're going to be resurrected, amen, amen. out of this place. I can't wait. <laughs> you know, this boy just talked about our bodies this morning. You know, we, as we get older, our bodies are just decaying away and we're facing different operations they're taking parts out of our body sometimes they put parts back sometimes they don't you know and it's just a part of getting old and uh, you might think now that you're nice and young Jerome but <laughs> later on when you get older I mean you feel fit you feel invincible when you're young but as you get older it starts to show what your body's all about it's a corrupted body in Romans 8 11 says this but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. That's, that's the promise we have. That spirit that is in you is going to raise, raise you up. That's that spirit of Jesus Christ. Turn your Bibles over to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. So one day... We will be resurrected, amen. And we're looking at the resurrection of the body and what that's going to be like. In John chapter 6 and verse 36. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Sorry, it's 39. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Everyone's going to get raised up. He said everything. In verses uh, 42, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and, will, and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. You, it's guaranteed you're going to be, have a great resurrection day. Amen. Just as Christ was raised from the dead. And we're going to look at the body the body that we have there verse also in verse 44 says no man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him and I'll raise him up at the last day it's God's word we believe in God's word amen, amen. we believe it's the truth amen. so what will the resurrection body of the believer be like it's going to be like his body a glorious body Praise God, we're not going to be raised up in these bodies, amen. What a mess. <laughs> but we're going, to be, we're going to be raised up in his body. And what was his body like? It was recognisable. Uh, go over to Luke 24. Luke 24. And verse um, 31. And of course, this is a story of the two men uh, walking to Emmaus and Jesus Christ comes by them and starts walking with them. And talking with them and he opens, expounds to them all the scriptures and opens up the scriptures in verse 31 says and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight they actually knew who he was as soon as he broke bread i don't know what that was i've tried to think what what was it that actually stemmed them to know him and when he broke bread maybe it was his hands when he put his hands down and they saw his nail pierced hands they knew it was knew it was their lord and savior i'm not sure but uh he was recognisable. In Luke uh, 24, 39 there too, it says, and this is uh, when he goes to the disciples and he, uh, in verse 38, and he said unto them, Why are ye trouble, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see. 
for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. So this body has flesh and bones. It's solid. It's not just a spiritual body, although it is a spiritual body. And it's also uh, in John chapter 2019, John 2019, it's a powerful body. It's also going to be a powerful body. It's just like his body. 2019, it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, then the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. You see the significance of that. The doors were, and everything were shut and then all of a sudden he appeared there. Who's not here today? Shay's not here. Now, if I was standing here talking and all of a sudden Shay appeared here next to me, I'd, I'd freak out take for the door. I mean, <laughs> I'd be out of here. I mean, that, that'd be pretty scary, wouldn't it? Yeah. But that's what his new body can do. It's powerful. Uh, just before that, Mary Magdalene's in. She's looking in the stoom and weeping, and Jesus comes behind her, if you remember the story, and, and she looks around and says, Oh, Rabboni, looks up at him, and, which is to say, Master. And remember what, what he said to her? He said, Don't touch me. Touch me not, for I haven't yet ascended to my Father. In that same day, he's seeing the disciples here, in that same day he'd been to see the Father and come back. And I take that that well, God's in heaven. So he'd seen the Father and come back. This body is powerful. It's something else. It's something to look forward to, amen. Yeah. It's, it's taken away the restrictions of this earth and uh, it's a powerful body. And as we read in there, in, back in 1 Corinthians 15, we'll go back to there, with what body do they come? So we're looking at the body. And this is the body that we're going to get. Verses 37 and 38 we read there. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. It's going to be the same body, but it's going to be different. So you're going to, each seed gives its own body. Now, if we sow wheat, wheat grows, doesn't it? Right. If we sow, uh, you know, something like barley, barley will grow out. The new body will be the same body and that it will be absolutely identified with a body which has died. In other words, if John Gaden has been sown, it will be John Gaden who will be raised. I like Amen. Uh, Pastor Marsh be sown, Pastor Marsh be raised. And if each of us, if you're saved and born again, your body is going to get sown like a grain of wheat and it's going to come up as a new body. Amen. Amen. You know, the body is uh, absolutely identified with with us I've often thought of it and thought well you know we see where they knew who Jesus was and of course having a new body obviously we're not going to look the same but in some ways we're going to know one another and know who we are up there it's I mean it's a, it's a thought that you know takes you off, off, off in there a bit and you think you know what is this new body and it's, it's the same body but it's a new body it's a different body and uh, our, our Lord Jesus Christ's body, it was recognisable. And it was different also. His body was different. How come those fellows on the way to Emmaus didn't recognise him at first? You know, it's... But after a while they did. They recognised who he was. I think it's going to be the same with us. And we won't be weak as we were. We're going to be strong and have a lot of power in that body. There won't be the same, we won't be subject to the same human limitations that we have here. We're going to have a new body, amen. It's going to be something else. And Jesus Christ's body was strong. And it was also a glorified, a glorious body. And so too, that's the sort of body we're going to have. In verses 38 to 41, 1 Corinthians 15. It says, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, 
But there is one kind of flesh of men, another of flesh, another of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Now, celestial body is, is out there, away from earth. When you look at the heavens, that's celestial. Terrestrial is here, that's on earth. Everything that's, that's here in the earth's atmosphere is terrestrial. That's what it's talking about. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. We see here that it will be a God-given body suited to our new environment. We won't be living in the house where you're living now, amen. Mm -hmm. We'll be living in a new place. And the body that we have is going to be made up for that. Just as God, God gave a body to Adam, Genesis 2, 7, remember he formed Adam to the dust and the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And also to Eve, remember he took the rib out of Eve and he made Eve, and he made them. They were made of the dust of the ground. So at the res resurrection, he's going to give us a new body and every redeemed sinner, a body which is perfectly suited in a new life and it'll live for God and with God in a new environment. So the child of God will have a body fitted for the life in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's something else. You know, I remember a preacher saying to me once, you know, we're, we're made of dust, amen. He said, why do you think, you know, the, when, when fellas wear collars all the time, you know, and, and you get that, that sort of reddish look around on the collar, he said, that's that old dust coming out of you, amen. <laughs> I think his wife didn't agree with that, said, you, it's just dirt, you know. <laughs> he reckons it's part of the clay that we're made of. <laughs> but we are, we're made from clay. And that's what these bodies are. But when we get a resurrected body, it's not going to be a clay body, amen. It's going to be a special body amen. that Jesus Christ had. And verse 42 says, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption and is raised in incorruption. It will be an incorruptible body. Not a corruptible body like we have. Like I said before, we're losing these parts, you know, as you get older. You just, you can't avoid it. You just get older, amen. You keep on growing in this life and things happen in this body and, you know, we, we start to lose it. It starts to go downhill in a big way. It's because it is a corruptible body. And it's liable to decay. As every human body decays, it loses its bloom and its powers and becomes worn and wasted with disease. And that's because of sin, amen. Sin causes that. Our new bodies in the resurrection will have no elements of corruption. Disease or death will never be able to touch these bodies, nor will they fail to lose their powers, faculties or senses. We shall possess eternal, non-decaying youth, amen. Just remember when you were young, you know, my son always comes up and he says, Dad, you know, you... You've got to get on these special juice diets and everything to keep your body going right. And I agree with all that. That's, that's good. He says, look, that's why you're getting sick. Well, maybe part of it. But when I was his age, when I was younger, I was fit and healthy. Amen. I was able to do a lot of stuff. But as you get older, it just doesn't stay with you, amen, that youth. But we'll be, we're going to stay in a non-decaying body and stay youthful. I don't know that, like, you say you look at us now, see... You guys, myself, we're not going to be old looking in that new body, amen. I've heard it said sometimes we'll probably be the, around the age of 30. Maybe a perfect, you know, perfect body at age of 30 in, in that look. I don't know. It's just a new body, but it won't be, it won't be some young and some old, old and all this. So we're not going to be like we are now, amen. It's going to be a new body, incorruptible body. Verse 43 said, It is sown in dishonour, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It will be a glorious body and unmarked by dishonour. You know, the word dishonour, you could put that in. We dishonour God when we sin against God. Yeah. This body won't do that. You yeah. won't sin against God anymore, amen? Isn't that good? No sin. Praise the Lord. What a body. That'll be something else. Our earthly bodies are being dishonoured by sin. And it's brought to seas and decay, but all will be changed on that day in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, when that happens in it, 
and we, we spend our life in eternity in a new body. In verse 43 also, it says in 43, it is raised in power. You know, it's going to be, as I said before, a powerful body in which there is no weakness. You know, our present bodies are weak and they need constant care. We need to rest, we need to sleep, we need to eat food all the time to keep them going. And even when the years, they get weaker and, and still get weaker and die anyway, no matter what. If you sleep more, it doesn't help, help you, amen? Okay. It's just the way they are. But one day, we're going to be raised in power, amen? amen. There's body, we're going to be raised in a power and a new bodies. We shall never know fatigue or exhaustion again. We'll never get tired. Just imagine that, amen? <laughs> they ask you at the hospital, you know, how many flights of stairs you can walk up before you start to puff and stop, you know what I mean? And that's what happens to us. But in that body, it's going to be full of power, amen? It's going to be good. It's going to be a spiritual body. Verses 44 uh, to 46 says, It is sown a natural body, is raised a spiritual body. It is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man Adam was made a living soul and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural and after that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is... The Lord from heaven. Amen. It's, it's going to be a spiritual body, not a natural body that we've got. You know, just animals have a lot more senses than we have, as in, you know, I don't mean in senses of thinking, but <laughs> as in senses. You see, you know, I read a thing once where a dog, you know, when you go and you greet your dog and he's sniff, sniff, sniff around your feet and sniffing around your legs and sometimes <laughs> he's really sniffing out, they can tell where you've been. They can tell where you've been for the last two days, amen. Their senses are that good. They've got really strong senses. And, you know, we've got senses. We've got sight. We've got hearing. We've got taste. We've got smell. We've got touch. But I reckon we're going to have, like, 50 senses at least or more, not just five. I don't know how many senses we're going to get. We're going to get heaps. It's going to be so good, Amen. Our present soul bodies only have those five senses, but our spiritual bodies, they're going to be greater and larger and better. Amen. It's going to be so good. I can't wait till that happens. Yeah, I'm just about out of time, but verses 47 to 50 says, The first man is of the earth earthy, and the second man is of the Lord from heaven. As it is the earthy, such are they also the earthy. earthy. And such as are heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. You know, I've heard some, some of them say, you know, when the rapture hits, there's going to be pools of blood everywhere. I don't know if that happens because he said, you know, the uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not sure how that's all going to happen. We don't really know. But you think about it. It's going, we're going to be given that spiritual body. Verse 53 says this, For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, and this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. It will be a heavenly body, not an earthly body. It's going to be a heavenly body. It's going to be immortal, not mortal. Everything about our present bodies is earthly. Everything about our new body will be heavenly. Our present bodies are composed of dust. Our new bodies will have no elements of dust in them at all. They'll be celestial bodies. Celestial, something made for heaven, amen, not for this earth. That's right. You know, I just can't wait. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day, amen. Yeah, no more of this stuff happening down here and all this rubbish that goes on. I can't wait to that resurrection day, amen. amen. And we'll be as he is. You know the greatest thing about it? We'll be as Christ. Amen. We'll be with him. Amen. Walking with him, talking with him. I mean, they say, oh, I'd love to get up there and talk to Moses and Elijah. I want to get up there and see Jesus Christ face to face, amen, amen. and talk to him. What a glorious day that's going to be. Yeah, Let's pray. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. And, Lord, you're a great God and a wonderful Saviour. And we thank you for 
showing us these things in your word that was penned down from, from Paul, your apostle. And we pray, Father, that, Lord, you help us to take these things and look, Lord, that um, in our life, the hope that we have in the res resurrection, as we thank you for it today. Pray you bless our time of fellowship and the preaching and the singing today. Just fill us, fill us with your Holy Spirit as we thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.